we're at the point now where we have little to no flame at all. So in order to spread this out, to uh, put it out, a couple things that needs to be considered. The first thing is to pull all this excess unburned or torrified wood back out of the way. That way you can pull this biochar out and uh, you can spread it without a whole bunch of wood that, that gets in the way. So it's a balancing act. Get all this wood out of the way while trying to stop this from going to ash. And then as soon as I get all this uh, pulled out away, the one question is, how long do you let it sit and cook like this? And you gotta play with it batch, batch after batch because sometimes I've pulled this apart a little bit too quick where I could have let it burn for another, oh say 10 minutes and it made all the difference in the world. I ended up with less biochar. So it's, it's something that you just gotta experiment with. But for right now, what we're gonna do, pull this back and keep the ash down. And then what we'll do is give it a couple more minutes to figure out what we're going to do. Because I'm pulling this out and there's biochar out here. Might just well douse it. If you don't douse it, it'll go right to ash. So I'll pull this out and what we'll do is cut out for a moment and then we'll be right back and we'll start pulling this apart. Okay, so we've started off with the final step here. We have the biochar is in one big pile and what I need to do is spread that out. But before doing that, I wanna show you what we did. You can see that for the most part, we raked out all of the torrified wood and they're in piles like what you see over here. I raked it into a pile to get it out of the way. And you can see over here as well. We've got a pile over there and then we have a pile over there. So what we're going to do is douse this pile real, real heavily and then I'll go ahead and start pulling this out and dousing it down as I pull it out. So the intent is for us to spread this pile out so that every bit of it is spread out and separated thoroughly so that it, it does not continue to, to, uh, to burn down. Without question, this is a, a tough step here because if you leave any portion smoldering whatsoever, you could have a potential grass fire, you could lose all of what you've done. And uh, right now is the most important time for prudence to make sure that you've taken all of this wood and all this time and all this effort and you put a final good finish on it and spread it out uniformly like we have these other piles. And, and then you're all done. So we'll go ahead and get started with that in a moment. First I'll douse this pile down. Well, we've been dousing this pile of biochar now for five to eight minutes. And uh, it's pretty harmless. What we have here because of the intense heat inside this pile we have this steam. It's not smoke whatsoever. 
So if you look up here, you can see the steam that's rising up off of this. Um, pretty much doesn't bother me. It's a little bit warm. And uh, in total, I'd have to say that steam doesn't go up any more than probably eight feet of, off the ground. So we're in the last stage before we pull all this apart. And what I'll try to do here, you can zoom in. I'm, I'm going to foolishly reach in and pull a piece and, and uh, break it apart. So right over here, if you're zoomed in, I'm going to drop the hose and you can see the biochar. Look how beautiful that is. Just crumbles in my hand. Very beautiful biochar. Here's a look at this piece. This piece is taking on the shape of the piece of wood it started with. Um, it's a little warm, a little warm. <laughs> but when you zoom in and take a close look at it, you see how brittle it is? Breaks apart. This is exceptionally beautiful, beautiful biochar. And uh, that's what we're going to get throughout this entire pile with an exception of a few pieces here or there that just didn't burn all the way through. This is slightly torrified. You can see the browning here, right in here. So this isn't complete throughout, but nonetheless, it will deteriorate and become food for the little critters down underground. So we're good to go. So we're now officially at about an hour and 25 minutes in, maybe an hour and a half. And we're going to douse this for two to three minutes longer, and then we'll go ahead and start pulling it apart. We are now at the point where we have doused this fire or this biochar for about an additional five, six, seven minutes. And this is normally a two person project. The way you want to do this is have one person with the garden rake that's pulling the biochar out while the other person is dousing it down. Um, as you're pulling this out, it becomes very volatile and it can, it can burn very, it can start a fire going very easily. But because Melissa's behind the camera, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this down and go ahead and start pulling some of it out and then douse as I'm going along just so we can illustrate just how this stuff is done. So if you can bear with us for a moment here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start raking this out and you can see how this this part works by spreading this in a very large diameter. You can see as this is getting pulled out, you start to see this is getting a little bit more aggressive. You can see a lot more ash starting to form. That's why we encourage having one person dousing it to keep fire and ash to a minimum. And occasionally you run into well, a piece of wood like this that's has not burned. This gets very warm. So what I want to do is just quickly douse this before we start getting too much ash. Can you see it forming right here? A lot of ash. The ground right there is so hot that literally I could pull that back and you can see the water boiling on top of the bare ground. So it's a slow process, but this is how you do it. Over the course of about 10 to 15 minutes, you should have the entire pile pulled out and you should be all done.
Okay, so now we have the pile is spread out. And because we took an extra 10 to 15 minutes of dousing this, this is very controllable. So we don't have nearly as many flare-ups as what you normally would have. So the last step was, as you can see, it's very important that you douse the pile of biochar very, very thoroughly. And then you've got less to deal with after you've got it spread out. So I've got this spread out over an area of about three to four times its size it started with. And on average, this biochar probably is about an inch and a half deep through that whole area. So when you zoom in and take a look at some of this, you can see it's really beautiful black biochar. And so for about an hour worth of work of piling all that wood, and then about an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes of burning this, I consider that very little effort for all the benefits we'll be getting off this biochar. And we're looking forward to 2012 when we can take all of these efforts from burning pile after pile after pile after pile of wood and seeing what it does for us next year. You could tell from our sunflower and our corn experiments that the um, biochar laying on the ground affected the results. It actually did not have to be implemented into the ground to actually affect some of the corn and the um, sunflowers that were growing. So we're really excited to see what this does after we get all this implemented with uh, compost and lots of sawdust and mulch and let the critters and the biochar and the compost do its work over the winter months because we're going to keep it very very busy next year in 2012 and we're looking forward to showing you some amazing test results from this entire plot as compared excuse me as compared to this plot you're looking at over here where we have planted this into rye we're going to turn it under as green manure and uh, we'll see how Everything compares without biochar on that side and with biochar on this side. So hopefully this is helpful enough for people to know how to do this on their own. Feel free to contact us at michiganbiochar.com and uh, we'd be happy to give you a further insight if you have any questions on this technique. We enjoy uh, doing this and we are really looking forward to see what 2012 looks like.